Hi, I'm Dr. Philip Ovedia, your guide optimizing your metabolic health. Today, I'm going to break it down because most people are unaware of which lab tests provide valuable insights and which are unnecessary. Here's what we're going to talk about today. Avoiding the unnecessary and expensive genetic and glucose screening tests. The importance of advanced lipid testing over just the standard lipid panel. And why choosing comprehensive tests for a holistic view of your health is so important. So, Let's get started and let's talk about how to avoid unnecessary and expensive tests. I want you to understand why genetic testing is rarely insightful for the general population. Now understand that when you screen your entire genome, there's going to be lots of variances that are found. And yes, many of these genetic variances are important, but they really are not deterministic, except in rare cases. What I mean by this is that genetic factors may kind of set a range that you exist within, but you can always alter which end of that range you end up in depending on your habits, most important being what you eat on a daily basis. So it is in rare circumstances that I find that the genetic tests are useful. Next, I want to talk about the limitations of standard glucose testing. Most doctors will check your blood glucose level and your hemoglobin A1c. Maybe. Some don't even check that. The problem with your blood glucose level on a standard blood test is it literally just gives you one snapshot in time. For that one second when you had your glucose drawn, what was your blood sugar level? Well, your blood sugar level is going to vary from second to second, minute to minute, it hour to hour throughout the day. So standard glucose checking of just the fasting blood glucose level, for instance, really leaves us short. Now, you might say the hemoglobin A1c test is better. It gives us an overview of what your blood sugar has looked like for a three-month period. And yes, that is better than just the snapshot that we get from our fasting glucose. But the hemoglobin A1c still may miss a very important problem that's hiding underneath the surface. See, it turns out that for a long period of time before your blood sugar starts to elevate and before most doctors are going to detect that you have diabetes or even pre-diabetes, there has been insulin resistance brewing. And since your doctor isn't checking your fasting insulin level, he or she may miss this very important period of time when damage is being done to your blood vessels and other organs. And if we check a simple fasting Fasting insulin level, we can get an insight as to whether or not you're headed for future problems. Finally, let's talk about the standard lipid panel and what that misses. There are two problems with the standard lipid panel. Number one, the way that your doctor might be interpreting the results. Most doctors have been trained to really only focus on one measurement on that lipid panel, your LDL cholesterol. What they and you have been told is bad cholesterol. Well, it turns out that that's a very incomplete picture of what's going on in the atherosclerotic process, in the buildup of plaque in your vessels. I prefer to look at two other numbers on that panel, your HDL cholesterol and your triglyceride level. And it turns out that having a high triglyceride level and a low HDL cholesterol level is a bigger predictor of heart disease risk than having an elevated LDL cholesterol level. And the other problem is that not all LDL is the same. It's not all bad cholesterol, as your doctor may mistakenly believe. It turns out that LDL is sometimes bad and sometimes good. And in order to figure out whether or not you have the good or the bad type of LDL cholesterol, you need to do a more advanced lipid panel. So instead of spending your money on expensive genetic testing, I'd rather see that money spent on an advanced lipid panel, which is nowhere near as expensive and is going to give you a better idea of where you stand from a metabolic standpoint. Now let's dig a little deeper on the advanced lipid testing. I want you all to understand how the advanced lipid testing provides a more accurate picture of your cardiovascular risk. I want you to understand the critical metrics 
that are missed by the standard lipid panel and the significance, the LDL particle size in your heart health. Earlier in the video, I talked about how the standard lipid panel doesn't give us a complete picture of what's going on with your lipoproteins. These are the proteins that are trafficking the cholesterol through your bloodstream. And that's what we're actually measuring when we talk about things like LDL and HDL. Digging down deeper, when we look at LDL cholesterol, it's not all bad. There's really two types of LDL cholesterol particles. There are the small, dense LDL particles, and there are the large, buoyant, or large, fluffy LDL particles. It's the small, dense LDL particles that get involved in plaque formation. The large, fluffy particles, the large, buoyant particles do not. So when we see that someone's LDL level is what's considered high, high by most traditional standards, I want to know, is that LDL large or is it small? Because if it's all or mostly large, fluffy, large, buoyant LDL particles, that may not be the problematic situation that your traditional doctor thinks it is. Finally, let's talk about choosing comprehensive tests for a holistic view. There are some basic tests that can give us a lot of information about your overall health. And specifically, I look at the comprehensive metabolic panel. And a lot of doctors don't really extract all of the important information that's in here. The comprehensive metabolic panel is going to give you information about your kidney function, about your liver function. It can give early insights into whether or not you're developing something like fatty liver disease which can be a harbinger of the metabolic problems that are going on under the surface. I want you to understand the importance of getting the advanced lipid panel done. And, you know, the cost of blood work can be very variable, but oftentimes doctors have gotten a misconstrued concept of that because the pricing is kind of based on what the insurance companies will pay. It turns out that advanced lipid panels, which many doctors perceive to be very expensive can be gotten at very reasonable prices when you go to some self-order lab sites, um, or if you tell the lab company that you want to pay cash up front, these tests end up being a lot less expensive than it may be even after your insurance provides coverage for it. So find a doctor who understands this, can work with you, um, and sometimes you need to be willing to invest a little bit of money, but do so smartly. Like I said earlier in the video, I'd much rather see you spend some money on an advanced lipid panel than spend even more money on the comprehensive genetic panel that may not really give you much actionable information. Ask about very important metrics of cardiac health that many doctors miss. These are things like lipoprotein A, LP little a, and homocysteine. And if your doctors don't know what those tests are and how to utilize them, it might be a red flag that that doctor is not the right doctor to be managing your heart health. And finally, inflammation markers are very important in an overall comprehensive picture of your health. And if your doctor isn't including inflammation markers like C-reactive protein, CRP, in a layer panel that they've ordered for you, it might be time to find another doctor. So I hope this was helpful, but I'm here to learn from you. So if you have questions or need more information on any of the topics that we discussed, please feel free to ask. If you have other topics that you want us to talk about or other feedback on this video, please comment below and go to ifixhearts.com and check out all of the ways that my team and I can be of service to you.